Imagine that you have a friend with 12 names. No, really, there's actually people out there like this. They have 12 different names all strung together, probably because their parents wanted to differentiate them, but this creates a problem. Anytime you want to mention them correctly, you have to say all 12 names, which could take way too long for everybody involved. Instead, you probably pick one name or come up with one and give that friend a nickname. Now, this nickname is a much easier way to identify your friend, whether you're calling their attention or telling a friend a story about them. They still legally have 12 names, however using one is for simplicity. Now this is exactly what ENS is. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what ENS is and why you might want to check it out. Okay, let's dig in. What is ENS? To put it simply, ENS is an acronym that stands for Ethereum Name Service, which is a protocol that allows you to do a bunch of cool stuff on the Ethereum network. Probably the best value add is that they convert machine-readable addresses into human-readable addresses. Alright, so the way that most cryptocurrencies work is you have a public key and a private key. Now we actually have a full video explaining how both of these function, but for this video you just need to know that the private key is what is used to send your crypto, while the public key is practically your address. You can think of your public key as your house address or your email address. You want to share that with people who intend to pay you. Maybe you're out for coffee with a friend and they want to pay you back since you paid for their coffee. Well, to do so, they would need your public key so they know where to send their funds. However, the issue is that the public key isn't something you can just say out loud. It's quite long and literally a bunch of seemingly random numbers and letters. Here, take a look. So obviously this was a problem. Two developers came up with a way to basically make nicknames for Ethereum addresses. Instead of having to read aloud 64 numbers and characters and hoping that your friend hears them all correctly in a noisy cafe, or rather than emailing him your public key, you can instead just tell him your ENS address. It could be something as simple as whiteboardcrypto.ens. You could tell them that, and the ENS name server will look up the true address for your friend and ensure that whoever registered whiteboardcrypto.ens will receive the funds that they're trying to send. This is very important in the psychological roadblocks of getting people onboarded to crypto. I actually started a project with my aunt and my cousin where we invest $20 a month each and put it into a Ledger hardware wallet. Now the most confusing part for them was figuring out how to send the crypto from the centralized exchange that we bought it from, which was Coinbase, to the actual Ledger address. If they instead just set up an ENS like Family Crypto and then sent it there, that roadblock would immediately be gone. And it seems a big issue of getting more people onto crypto is the fact that most of it is quite technical, which <laughs> you can see by the sheer number of people who use Robinhood to buy Dogecoin. They do it because it's simple. Even though they aren't truly holding Dogecoin, they just go ahead, enter their bank account, and literally press buy because it's simple. Now, the cool thing about ENS is that it is actually a 100% D decentralized name service lookup system. This means it's not controlled by one single authority, and the safety of using it is much higher. What if we were trying to pay you $5 in Ethereum because you liked our video, and so we typed in your address, Mega ETH holder never sells. And instead of redirecting it to your true wallet address, well, they're a central authority so they can make it redirect to their wallet address. In fact, a central authority could easily redirect all name lookups temporarily to their wallet. In fact, even more, a hacker could do the same, which is why centralized applications are less secure. Nick Johnson and Alex Van Dessen of the Ethereum Foundation led the initial development of the Ethereum name service. And you should know it has been audited and is actually open source for everybody to view and review the code, a standard of any great blockchain tool. Let's move on to how it works. Well, ENS is essentially two smart contracts that simply do what we mentioned earlier. You give them a simple address like Whiteboard Crypto, and then they will look it up in their giant table of true Ethereum wallet addresses for the transaction to occur. If you want to register your own name and then add it to that giant table in the smart contract, all you have to do is pay a small fee on ENS.domains. Last time I checked, it was roughly $60 for 10 years. 
However, right now a majority of domains just have the .eth ending, but they're looking into expanding this to other top level domains like .crypto, .xyz, and .club. For a more technical answer of how the ENS lookup works, when someone requests a lookup, they have to get two pieces of information. First, they must figure out who the resolver is. The resolver is usually set whenever you're first creating your ENS domain. Secondly, whoever is requesting that true address must then go to that resolver with the name that they're wanting to look up and ask for the true address. Now this is because there are many different name resolvers, which those name resolvers are essentially the lookup tables that hold a bunch of information. Also, one fun fact about the Ethereum name service is that you can actually use Unicode in the domain. For the non-techies out there, this means you can put emojis in your domain. Another thing is that ENS intends to replace more than just wallet addresses. Right now, they also resolve domains as well. For example, a website hosted using IPFS, which is a basically a blockchain version of file sharing, could have a long and gnarly domain address with tons of non-memorable letters and numbers. However, you can simply point an easy ENS domain to it so that you can tell your friends to visit the simpler, more human-readable domain. One thing to think about is that one downside of ENS is that it's not as fast as DNS, which is the protocol that the internet uses to convert domain addresses to IP addresses, which is a very similar function. DNS can happen in mere milliseconds, while sometimes ENS can take a few minutes depending on the network congestion. That's all we have for today, but as we end this video, we have a question to ask. Ask you. Do you think we should create a video on this channel of how to actually register an ENS domain? To show the full process, we have found that there are videos that we want to create to help the community, however, they may not be strictly whiteboard videos. An alternative is that maybe we should create a second channel for these videos and keep the foundational whiteboard videos separate? Let us know your thoughts below, we always read every comment. If you're early, you may even get a heart. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, we hope you've enjoyed it, we really hope that you've learned something, and as always, we hope to see you in the next one.